Hey there, boys, girls, and squirrels. My name is Modstab, also known as Devin, and this is... I am Cheyenne, the wife, also, of, also known as Mrs. Stab. That's right. So. The comments have dictated this to be true. Welcome to episode four. I think this is episode four, is it not? Number... Numero cuatro. Yeah, the episode number four of the mods cast. You guys have been given really good feedback. Um, you still aren't commenting in the comment section down below what you guys want to hear us talk about. It's a shame. Do it right now. It's a shame. Close out this video. Type in the comment section what you want to hear us talk about. And then don't you dare. Okay, I'm just kidding. Come back every episode. But if you give us some topics, we'll be more than happy to talk about them. That's right. we like talking. That's right. However, today's episode, as alluded to the in, in the end of the last episode, is... Justice and fairness, which is a really abs—I don't want to say abstract um, it kind is more of concept, abstract than what we've but done. it's less experiential um, to an extent, which is what we feel that we do the best at—is like sharing stories of our life or experiences that we've had that we can then help you guys with. But over the last week or so, I've been really, my brain has been stuck on this concept of justice versus fairness. And how we've treated yeah. it, um, just as a people, as a whole, but more spe specifically in like Western society, like how we've treated those two phrases. And I mean, we're definitely going to get into the definitions and why we think that. But I just was incredibly interested in trying to just talk about this because it was something that I was just mulling over, and I think I think it's something that's important to talk about. So, and when he says mulling over, um, he's like actively thinking about it for the last couple of weeks and right. i'm just like babe abstract and us you know when we did the perfectionism i'm like i'm i really had my doubts but it was cool because we we knew that with the abstract stuff we had to kind of talk about it ahead of time mm -hmm. so it gave us some really interesting stuff to talk about this morning really did. um i was again i was leery because i'm like i don't want to i always, don't know you're always i don't leery know about but, everything but it was cool because then we were Kinda actually like this mug oh it's, cool. it's such a cool it's one of those ones where if you warm up coffee or tea or anything, these window panes have these images, but as it cools down, they fade into black. It's glorious. It's cool. It's amazing. I gave it to him for Christmas. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. so, also, before we continue, I just want to say a couple things. I do live you stream can't say anything. every Monday and Wednesday. You're not allowed to in talk Twitch. about it. Click the link in the description below because we don't have that far to go before we hit affiliate with Twitch. And I am super stoked about that he because is. that's a blast. blast. I love it so he, much. He's been mulling that over a lot too. A lot. Also, there's other links in the descriptions, community discord, um, Patreon options for those of you that want to financially support the content that we mm -hmm. do here um, with exclusive mm -hmm. giveaways and benefits via that venue. Um, now that I've done my sh shameless self-promotion, um, let's jump straight into the mods cast since we've been kind of... We've been a little bit rambly this morning. Coffee definitely helps us get a one-track mind. It's beautiful. Um, we're going to start with kind of what does it mean. I'm going to start by giving the definition of just, which is kind of the singular form of justice, basically. Um, and then she's going to do the definition of fair. So Hi. dictionary definition-wise, we have just based on or behaving according to what is morally right and fair. And I think it's really important to kind of point out the fact that not only does it cover what is morally right, but it also encompasses fair in the definition. And we'll get into that in a, a little bit further. But the two things I want you to remember about that definition is it's morally right and fair. So you're acting in accordance with those two parameters. And now the I'm definition doing, am of I doing, fair. Okay. You can just click the search button. I can just... I had it set up for her so he they did. would search. He I did. tried to be a good husband. He's a good, good man. But she's headstrong and, and wants to do it all herself. Well, I mostly herself. This is, was actually a case of him saying something once and me not listening fully, and so wow. I remembered he. I'm just, just like you guys and not commenting in the comment <laughs> section down below. <laughs> okay, fair. Hey, Are you got ready? Him, got him, it boy. is an adjective. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, wow. In accordance with the rules or standards, legitimate, also of hair or complexion, light, <laughs> oh, blonde. No, not the right definition. No. Adverb, okay. without cheating or trying to achieve unjust advantage. Ooh. Ooh, that's kind of a hint. That's kind of a hint to what's going to happen in the rest of this podcast. But now that we have the dictionary definition the archaic noun woman is going a beautiful in depth, woman okay? abstract 
abstract, abstract. You are a less fair definitions. man. Less definition. Okay. But for real, now that we have the dictionary definitions, I think what's really important is the according to morally right and fair is what's important about justice. And what's important about fairness is acting um, according to a set of standards or parameters, right? I just hit my tooth with my coffee mug. <laughs> this happens every time she has coffee, so I'm not surprised. Anyways, I think what we're going to do is we're going to start actually with Wait, fair. You didn't want that there? No, I, I don't need it. We don't need this anymore. This can go off in a hole. Um, we're going to actually start with fair, and we kind of wanted to divide this up into a couple of different sections where she talks about fair, I talk about justice. That's because what we're doing? she was having a she was having a struggle of like, well, what am I even gonna say? This is like your thing. This is yours. It's only yours. I can't do anything. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> and so <laughs> it's okay, Rua. That's what I thought too. Anyway, so we're gonna let her talk about uh, fair. Fair. Um okay. and kind of I, I really think we should start with just. You want to start with just? I do want to start I with just. I can start with just. That's... Let's start with yeah. just. So justice. We've already established it is according to what is morally right and fair. Now, the reason I wanted to start with fair is because it does really tie into my personal way of explaining justice. But long story short, justice is you get the output that is equivalent to the input of your actions. So a very simplified way of thinking about this is justice is if you're on a workout kick, right? You work out every single day of your life and you are just like, swell, you're getting flexes on, you're push-ups, you're doing curls, you're doing skull crushers, you're squatting, whatever you're doing, okay? You're working your butt off to get into shape. Justice means that if you put your time in every single day, you are going to be the specimen of manly awesomeness or womanly womanliness, whatever that is. Now, justice is also... If you want to be in shape and you're like, I want to look like that guy, but you sit on your fat, lazy arse and you eat Cheetos and cream puffs all day, which is Language. me, okay? If you sit on Language. your fat, lazy arse, <laughs> justice is you get fat, lazy, and your arse expands. <laughs> justice. In that case... <gasps> Fair to wait, wait, no, wait. Woman, that yes, is justice. Because okay, justice. now justice. the fairness piece of that example. Let me bring it in. Don't <laughs> touch me. What doesn't seem fair? Well, fair. Wait. You need wait. To... <laughs> what doesn't this seem fair about happens, this situation, which I think this will be a decent segue, is we're he working can, on transition. Yeah. <laughs> he can eat cream puffs. Yeah. Sit on his tush all day, That's and right, his baby. metabolism prevents his tush That's right, baby. from getting bigger. Whereas, in my situation, that would not be the case. So it doesn't seem fair, Devin, fair, that unquote. the outcome for you would be different than the outcome for me. Ooh, like that was actually a smooth transition. I'm not going to lie. I told so, you so. Segue, haha. Wait, we did it. We. We did it. Me. I'm beautiful and I inspired. I inspired <laughs> okay. your transition so we goose. with my glory. We goose. Okay, goose. Duck, duck. Go. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so what I think is really important to cover is we're going to start from kind of the ground up with this. I think what we have done as a society is we have made justice and fairness exclusive of each other we've made them mutually exclusive i think is the right terminology here i don't know before you throw out the hate comments oh, listen to his shut up and freaking shut up and listen to me and you two all you do is interrupt me um all i was doing was trying <laughs> to minimize the she, negative she cares thinking. once again back to the first episode she cares what people think i don't ha ha just talk exactly no shut up <laughs> Anyways, what we have done as a society is we have separated these. We've made them mutually exclusive. We have said justice is one thing and fairness is another thing. And in her transition, she alluded to what we're going to be talking about. Whereas we look at fairness as a difference of outcome. So, for instance, Joe Schmo down Joe Schmo down the street makes a hundred thousand dollars a year. You make twenty thousand dollars a year. What well, face value? You're like that's not fair. I work my butt off. I work really hard. I, I work every day. I go into work every time they ask. Well, Joe Schmo down the road owns a construction company, right? Like, he's putting in 
all of the risk of that company. If he goes bankrupt, he is bankrupt. All his employees just find a new job. They don't have to pay anything into the system, right? Well, whereas you, let's say arbitrarily work at a fast food joint, McDonald's, a subway or whatever you're doing, like Dollar General, you aren't an owner of the company. You're not a manager of that company. You make $20,000 a year. At, like I said, at face value, that doesn't seem fair. You work hard. He works hard. You're putting in the same input, right? And so in theory dictates, well, we should both make a hundred thousand catch is he's not only is he putting in the time, which I can guarantee you if somebody is owning their own business, they're putting well more than 40 hours a week into their job. I can guarantee you as personal experience, I work my job right now and I'm putting at least 40 hours a week into content creation with no financial benefits. So like there is a disproportional amount of reward to work, at least in my case right now, as just an example. Now, since he is garnering all the risk of that company, that I would consider that as an input. You're not just inputting your time and your energy, which is an right. exorbitant amount. And I think that's that's the most important thing. He's to putting think about. in risk. What else is getting put in mm -hmm. that he's going to he either his, directly his reap the life. benefit of or the people who are working for him will reap the benefit of what he has put in. Exactly. Yeah. Which in the case of that is full 100% risk. If he goes bankrupt, he's under. He has no house. He has no car. He has nothing. Like if he doesn't own everything without a shadow of a doubt and his company goes bankrupt, the bank will take whatever he owes a loan on because to offset for that debt um, that was lost. So yes, you're only making 20. You both work hard. He makes 100. But he on top of putting in, chances are more time and energy than you, he is actually putting in all the reward. Now we stop there. Putting we in the reward? Putting in all of the energy and effort to get that reward. There we go. Um, now we, as a Western society, stop there. It's not fair. He gets this. I don't. Oh, wow. You need more. Yes. Now what, ha what really is the defining thing that I think we've missed? Fairness is the first step to justice. Fairness then, is the... Let me... Let me... Let me... Yes. I'm one of those so yeah, processors can, can, who has to like say it out loud. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like you said, fairness is the first step of justice. Of justice. So like, let's think of a, a wait, set of stairs, wait. like a literal <gasps> set of stairs. Oh, I'm behind now. Yeah, she's Tell behind. me more. <laughs> Tell me more. Tell uh, me more. Copyright, don't say no! it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, think of it like a, a staircase, right? The first step is fair. So what that means is everything is being applied oh, evenly. No! So, good lord equal <laughs> opportunity right equal chance to go into the next let's say financial tier or the next physical tier whatever it is you have an equal chance of pursuing that that is fairness at its most basic level you do as somebody coming right out of high school have the opportunity to put in the work and put in the effort to own your own business it's a possibility yes it's harder yes it requires more brain power on your part yes it requires more investment but it is something you do have the option to pursue, which is fair. Now we stop there. The next step after fair is the input, right? Or so action, right? or the action yeah. um, is what I actually um, talked about when we were talking about this beforehand. You have fairness is the first step. Action is the second step. So you take that equal chance to do something and you invest into it. A lot of people stop at fairness. Well, everything's fair. So, I'm going to step back and reap the rewards. I just made a connection. Uh, speak, speak, because we're about to get to the third step. Yeah. Okay. So how did you, okay, how did you word that? You worded it like um, what they decide to invest into it. Yes. So in if you were a call a couple of weeks ago, I was talking about a book called Grit. By the way, it's by Angela Duckworth, not Duckworthy, which is embarrassing. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Um, but one, one of the... Um, one of the concepts in that book is the idea of how we've been blinded by talent in a lot of ways. Yeah. Actually, this factors in really nicely. It does. It really does. We've been blinded by talent in many ways, um, and we like to attribute um, certain successes uh, to talent as kind of being the base mm -hmm. being of everything. Base. Um, and we do take we we take effort into account. Um, but effort is taken up for granted. A lot I of think so. Absolutely. And I think we, we as people just kind of like that mysticism or that mystery of, wow, they just must be so talented. Exactly. And I am, I am summarizing hugely right very, now. Very basically, I really recommend okay. this book. It's really cool. Grit. Um, but it talks about how, uh, 
you know, success in success. Yes, you need that that potential, that that mm-hmm. talent, that which genetically or with the way you've been raised has been instilled yeah. in you. Like those are things, you know. But talking about how in in moving forward with that talent, not just staying like mm-hmm. oh, you know, uh, at a base level. Uh, effort counts twice to help you build it in, yes. to achieve the potential mm-hmm. that you have in that. So uh, I don't know if I did that whole talk justice, but I love how you talked about, um, you know, you have to make a choice to invest. In action, and yeah. an investment um, in action, yeah. And I so think. I think that, you know, it might be, oh, yeah, that ties in. We were talking about, because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm an educator, so a lot of She the, likes to talk, too. A lot, yes. Well, you just talked for like eight minutes it's straight. Okay. I get to talk uh, at least twice as much. I like to tie um, real world application back into um, the world that I'm in, mm-hmm. career wise, into education. Yeah. And um, I did teach math for a little stint um, mm. and, you know, got to see all sorts of um, interesting dynamics in that. And um, one thing that we were talking about with the concept of fairness is okay, so in our like education system, um, and this is a whole can of worms. But Did at you a just basic cover it level, at its most basic level, because we'll be basic, here for like hours if we don't. <laughs> at the most basic level is the way that we teach in a public school, at mm-hmm. least traditionally, fair to kids. Um, and Quote I, unquote, you know, fair. I really yeah. do believe that it does cater more towards certain learning styles. It Absolutely. caters more towards certain. Um, talents people as it can, were it tailors to people that can set listen absorb and maintain it doesn't tailor in, in to like people the that traditional re- sense it in doesn't it classroom. does not tailor to people that need the action to really absorb that learning kinesthetic we call it kinesthetic learning kinesthetic learning it and doesn't tailor well and there's there's outlying circumstances there's different types of schools there's yeah um absolutely. there's work-based schools that i think try to mitigate that unfairness right uh at the end of the day um you know they look at your standards and they mm-hmm. look at your standardized tests and so that's a whole other conversation yeah, but short, yes. but we decide no inherently it's it's kind of unfair in that sense and so there are these other programs and other whatnot yes. other whatnot <laughs> to mitigate that unfairness yeah. um Oh, shoot. Where was I going with that? Oh, so we were talking know. about math and holding kids with that talent for math to um, the same standards as you would hold a kid who has to work really, really hard for it. Mm-hmm. And so we sure. talked about that input. You know, the kid who struggles and struggles and struggles and struggles, puts in time, 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 input, 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 stays after class, stays after school. Um, and they just barely squeak by with a C, whereas then you have the kid who's like, oh, they just have a math brain. Naturally have um, a math brain. Or they know. make those connections just more easily. This tends to be males, okay? Men tend to have more of a math brain. They just do... I don't know why. I can't give an excuse for it. But generally, we or have an at easier least, time. We have an easier time conceptualizing numbers. We just do. Well, because we yes and no. On average, but are raised with tape measures. We are raised with angles. Hey, you cut this board. Can you hold this for me? I'm going to fix the car. You are inundated with numbers as you grow up in a stereotypical in a household. traditional white household. Stereotypical. Yes. Stereotypical. <laughs> Which I believe is the correct way to raise children. I I think that that hands on at least in our in our part of the uh, country, yeah. the culture we. Grew I think you up need in. to have your kids hands on, anyways. As men, we have a lot of energy. We need to be doing things. We need to be raised with that as a reflection. Otherwise, we get in trouble every time. Okay, that's We're fair. We're digressing. That is a big Horrible digression. Horrible digression. That would be a cool Moving conversation on. later. But what I want to say is with a direction that. I'm going to go back to the math education piece, the direction that math is going in with analyzing relationships and problem solving. Women actually tend to do better with that part of it. Mm -hmm. So when you can get people working in teams and I'm not, and we're not trying to pigeonhole the way people's brains work. I totally, I'm an educator. I I get it. I don't care. People are different. Shut up. I, I do care. (laughs) It's important to me. I just said people are different. Shut up and stop complaining about it. (laughs) It's, this is funny. Okay. So in short, is it reasonable to hold a kid who struggles to the same expectation? Is it fair to hold them to the same expectation as the kid who has that talent? Um, and so, you know, that was just a conversation we had. We're not going to give a blanket statement and on that right now. But we're smoothly transition, smoothly transition from that. Transition. We yeah. are so obsessed with outcome and not effort. As a society, we are mm. absorbed in outcome, which Point. is, before I continue, I do want to kind of retitle this from justice and fairness i want to not retitle it on the title itself but 
kind of put in the concept of it's like a four-step process but okay, with justice and steps. fairness we gotta go back to our word so picture fairness everybody has equal opportunity like to pursue something to develop something to learn something everybody has the exposure to be able to do that that's fair Equitable. Second That's step, another word. Equitable. equitable. The second step is action. So the investment that you put in on that fairness to get some level of return. After you have that action, that investment, that physical effort of trying to, like I said, fully utilize the opportunities at your, at, at your station, your stand, your place, whatever it is. Then you step into the third step, which is justice. Now, why isn't justice the end all step? Because there's a little bit more to it than that. So what justice dictates is, like I said, you have the fair. Everybody has an option. You have the action. Then you have justice on that action. So these things need to build up on each other. Fairness and justice at face value would say it's not fair. Therefore, it's not just Joe Schmo makes, for instance, we talked about this a hundred thousand dollars. Well, you made 20,000. Well, you have fairness, difference in, in income brackets, action. He invested into that fairness to build his own company, therefore garnering extra risk, therefore garnering an extra yield in justice is how I would put it. Now, justice is you put 40 hours a week, you go home, you're done. That's it. You get your paycheck. He works 60, 70, 80 hours a week. And then he also garners the risk of bankruptcy. Therefore, justice dictates he does get a larger portion of that pie because there's more time, there's more effort, there's more risk. Like I said, I know this full hand. I go to my stereotypical nine to five job. I'm there. I'm done. Unless something frustrates me, it doesn't come home. It, it quite frankly, it doesn't ever have to come home. I get my paycheck. That's it. With the investment of content creation, I'm not only investing the same, if not double the time that I am at my standard nine to five job, I'm also financially like in the hole right now. This has yielded no financial benefit to me. So technically this business is thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars in the hole. Can you not remind me of that? Yes, <laughs> but that would dictate like, that's where we talk about, you have fairness, action, then justice, and they have to go one right out of the other. And then right after out, one right run out. right after the other and they have to flow. It's very linear. They flow. And then you get into the fourth step, which is the final step with Pete, which is what people are obsessed with is the outcome. So the outcome is he makes more money. That's what you're obsessed with. You don't care about any of the steps in between fairness and outcome. That is where you are stuck at, at the beginning and the end of the process. You couldn't give two rips about what is put up, put in the middle. As a Western society, that's what we tend to do. Sensationalism is obviously kind of a derivative of this. What's the next big thing? What's the next big movie? What's the next big trend? What's a global viral video I can make? We are obsessed with the outcome, not the effort that is required to get that outcome. So it's a four-step process, and they have to work and flow right into yes. another. Can I make a disclaimer really quick? Obviously, we are speaking from the perspective of Midwestern people, um, from the perspective of being in small town, slightly more rural America. Um, and so, you know, in our experiences, this is, this is, these are just patterns that we're noticing. We understand that there are obviously sometimes external factors that also influence, you know, that linear pattern. There are things that come up. Um, well, there are things that come up, but you know, what I would say to once again, bring it all back in is there is always equal opportunity. There's always equal opportunity. I can't say I agree with that. You always have the option to pursue something. Well, to you pursue something. You always have the option to pursue something. That is true. You always have exposure to education. Are there some crappy teachers? Yes. Are there cons some crappy construction workers? Yes. Yes. Are there crappy fast food workers? Yes. Are you one of those people? And if that's the case, you are getting your just rewards and not garnering an advancement in that career. Now, may I ask, we also talked about this, and maybe this is where yes. you're going. We talked about how sometimes that output isn't always um, within the same generation. Correct. And so I think that this brings into... Um, it's kind of the next into stage. our next Into our perspective, this idea that sometimes those outputs that we're seeing, um, it wasn't... 
in the same generation we're in that people are mm-hmm. reaping the rewards of something Freedoms. or sometimes on the other side um reaping the the crumminess of certain situations yeah. too well that absolutely in, so, in a great example this would be freedom f- freedom that's it people fought for freedom whether it was the freedom of black americans to not be suppressed and they're uh, being treated like humans like that was something that was socially acceptable to treat them like garbage in places like europe and then when our father, founding fathers came over here, they knew that that was a travesty to their creator because they were Christians. A lot of them were Christians or at least believed in the idea of a creator God. Now, what actually surprises a lot of people is this wasn't, you know, it wasn't in the 1900s when everything was finally fully separated and everybody got all their quote unquote freedoms to be able to vote, to be able to go to public places legally. What surprised a lot of people is Washington himself first First president, beautiful ma'am. A lot of people are obsessed with the fact like, oh, he was he had slaves. He was a piece of garbage. Like, bleh. He, which at the time was illegal, freed his slaves in his will. That is a foundational piece of he fought for those freedoms even when it may not have been socially acceptable. And we get to re- reap the rewards of that. Yes, is there racist piece of crap? Yes, are there bad people? Mm-hmm. Yes, I don't care if you're white, black... Hispanic, I don't care what your background is, your nationality is. There are garbage people who are garbage, and it doesn't matter what race you come from. But at its most foundational level, our founding fathers fought for that freedom, and we get to reap the rewards for that. I think many, that's a really important many thing. Many years, many generations. Many years, from many From legislation to combat. To, I, it's just so, there's just so much input. And, and in a more. So much. In a more palpable way to Ooh, get a feel for that in word. more recent like history would be millionaires. Because millionaires right now are being touted as the spawn of Satan, you pieces <laughs> of trash. Why won't you just give me your stuff for free? I hate you. Stuck at fairness and outcome, none of the stuff that happened in between. Which could have gone now, back many years. What did their family yeah. have to give up to be millionaires? Think of this, yeah. okay? How many stories have you heard of millionaire children that came out like, my dad never told me he loved me. My dad always worked. Mm-hmm. He never came home and sat down and watched a movie with me. Like, yes, there are millionaires that did a good job raising their kids. Absolutely. Just like there are poor people who did a bad job of raising their kids, right? You, you, that effort in the middle is the defining difference. That what's taken place in the middle is defining difference. Now, what did they have to sacrifice to garner that wealth? I can tell you from firsthand value, I wouldn't consider myself wealthy, but the amount of time that I put in creation to try to make content creation a successful and lucrative business, I have to sacrifice visiting times with my wife And I am barely considered what I would call a healthy middle class individual. We do have the, we have the money to support a middle class life. Have we done some bad decisions like buying a brand new car? That's a horrible financial investment. Yes. Do I love it? I have no regrets on that. I don't regret. I don't regret the vehicle purchase. (laughs) But is it a bad investment? Yes. Absolutely. It's I, a bad investment. Okay, now here's another thing, though. Will we see the benefits of that input yes, later in life? Yes, we will. See, you have to think long term. But fiscally, it is a bad investment. Maybe initially. So but what, I'm getting at, what I'm getting at is we are very solidly middle class. There's, there's, we're not close to middle upper. We're not close to middle lower. We are middle class. Now, um, I kind of forgot where I was going with this, but... Like I was saying, from personal experience, the sacrifices I have to make to be firmly middle class and try to make content creation um, a livable thing, I have to make a lot of time sacrifices with my wife. We don't get to go out and travel as much. We don't um, get to go out and eat as much. Obviously, COVID, whatever, it has its own impact. No, it's great, though. Wait, 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 wait. But but, 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 I will let you get to this in a minute. But that's the sacrifices I made to be securely middle class now think of infinitely more what people who have invested time into creating companies had to sacrifice think about think about the action or the input then compare that in a justice based system and then go to the outcome because if you just stay at fairness and you stay at outcome 
you forget all the effort, all the sacrifices, all the time and energy that went in to get those results. However, I now digress because she wanted to say something. It That's my 46 cents. 46, yeah. Specifically. Um, uh, mine was really just about um, kind of a rabbit hole on yeah. the going out to eat thing. <laughs> So um, one thing that we had to learn, and you know what? This wasn't meant to be like a financial advice podcast, no, although but, we could make it But it's it a really that. easy way to explain the concept of fairness, input That's or true. action, justice, outcome. It's a really easy yeah. way to explain because people understand money. Yeah, money. People do. Money. So something that I'm very grateful for. So definitely a rabbit hole, not totally connected but for shame um we we got to the point of realizing that you know if we wanted to make some headway on uh some credit card debt that we needed to kind of change the way yeah. we were we, we were our investing our money kind of completely the way we were living the way we were spending and so we i'm so grateful to the good lord that we ended up having to make that decision in the like probably about six months before yeah covet hit i'd say six months is pretty and, accurate because that's about when my car started being a yeah. poopy butthole oh yeah that was a big part of it and too. so we were just like what are we gonna do what if this thing we? goes out tomorrow like we have yeah. nothing we have nothing like we're done like i would have to quit my job base not no, exactly but that's kind we of we would have had to share a vehicle in a very uncomfortable situation in the sense where very. schedules would either have to change or i wouldn't have that job yeah. Like my schedule would have yeah. had to have changed that's because right. driving her in. So long story short, Wait, we I... knew that we had nothing oh, and that's what got us motivated to start looking at it in a little bit different light. And when we say nothing, what we mean by nothing is like nothing set aside in the mm -hmm. event of an emergency. Correct. And Correct. like we knew that that was a bad idea. <laughs> it's you a know, horrible idea. It really is. Please set stuff aside. Set stuff aside. And so like we just kind of had to do an overhaul. Okay. And we, we tightened our belts and we made the decision eating out, um, you know, one time a month or one yeah. time a payday. And yeah, um, even just that simple oh act. Oh my gosh. And we're, we're talking hundreds of dollars a month, by the way. Like just by changing Seriously. eating habits to cooking at home and then using a night out as a reward. Yeah. Like we're talking multiple hundreds of dollars a month. Yeah. Like literally enough to buy new graphics cards like a month like as for people who do gaming we saved enough to buy like a 2080 ti once a month not quite but very close we could have bought a new 2080 for the amount we were saving and eating out because we would always go to like places like texas roadhouse and big places where it was like or we'd go out like 30 dollars a plate or we'd go through drive through like multiple times oh, multiple times uh, a week. multiple times because Sometimes you know you both get day. you both get home from work yeah and you're tired. tired and you didn't plan ahead dumb but yeah. you didn't you know and it's like well you gotta eat you know um and you know it's not like you could get something out to thaw yeah. you know like we yeah. keep meat in the freezer you know so anyway it's just been kind of a lifestyle shift and so i was you know looking back in retrospect mm -hmm. um learning how to tighten your belt um oh my gosh. like kind of changing the type of input you're putting in exactly um back to the input you know, that's effort. that's yeah. not easy building new habits is not easy um but if you're consistent with them you end up reaping some pretty cool rewards yeah. like um you know already having some good cooking habits in place <laughs> before covid hits yeah and not you know endangering fast food workers you that's know and i'm not trying to hate on anybody but you know that that's a thing you know i think, I, I think it's important and i think that's a really cool way to kind of segue wise. yeah i think that's a really cool way to segue into kind of like our stereotypical like layout of these podcasts is what have we learned or what advice can we give to you guys um <laughs> if you want our advice right? and so you're always entitled a to great a great example of that is <laughs> before when we would eat out all the time we'd go out to texas roadhouse we'd go through a drive through whatever it may be we spent a lot of money per month like i said now if we stayed at the fairness stage we'd be like it's so hard to make a living like we barely have enough for rent we barely have enough for food like we barely have enough to cover our cars or whatever if we would have stopped there yeah. like we would have thought the world was out to get us and everything was a piece of crap and nothing was just or fair in the world but then we looked at our input or our action you have to on ask, what we were talking about. You have to ask those difficult you do. and humbling and, and cringy questions absolutely. You know, if you want to grow sometimes. And to, and to continue on that four-step process, yeah. we went from just looking at fairness and outcome to saying, wait a minute, what are we inputting to get us into the spot we're at? Oh crap! We're spending like four, five, six hundred dollars a month. Oh, I, was it that much? Out. There's no way it was. That I, it much. was. It, it was definitely. I was doing two hundred and fifty myself, like two hundred and fifty <sighs> to three hundred myself, because of just the nature of where I worked. And I could, I would reference, <laughs> I would assume that you did roughly the same amount because you worked about as much as I did, if not a little bit more, in traveling. So we went from 
well, everything, fairness and outcome. And then we said, what are we inputting to get this? Mm -hmm. And we realized, oh crap, like we're spending hundreds of dollars in food. It's kind of just that we're tight on our budget because we're just spending willy nilly. And you don't ever think of food as like a frugal expense, but when it's eating out and you spend 10, 20, $30 at a fast food place to get enough food to fill you up and you realize if I spent $30 in groceries, oh my I gosh. could feed a family of six for like a week. Obviously, a little bit of an exaggeration, but peanut butter have and jelly. Multiple, <laughs> you could have multiple, me like healthy meals. Like we did, um, just a great example of that is this week I did a Southwest like beef and rice meal. Oh, it was so good. We fed three people two meals, like very comfortably two meals. Mm -hmm. And that meal maybe cost us like two bucks, three bucks in materials instead of $30 for one meal. Like that really helps put it into perspective on yeah. is it a just outcome that you're tight financially because you eat out every day? Absolutely. That's justice because you are not putting the correct, not only the right amount of effort, but the correct effort into that. And then you get in that third step where I, where we talk about it's, it is absolutely just that you're tight because you have no money. And then you get that outcome of now my budget is tight. Whereas if you switch it and stop focusing on fairness and justice and focus on the whole thing, you say, all right, what's fair. I have all these options to eat out. I have all these options to buy groceries. Cool. I put in a lot of effort, which is what I was doing before when I was eating out, but I fine tuned that effort to be more frugal, to be more smart about that effort. So efficiency as well. Mm -hmm. And so I was more efficient with my effort then justice dictates, okay, we're spending less. So I'm not as tight on my budget. That is just, that is a just response to that. And then the outcome is I have a bunch of extra money a month, a little bit of an exaggeration, but now we can pay bills off faster. We have more wiggle room in case of emergency. That is two examples of us in our personal life mm -hmm. going through the four-step process of fairness, input, justice, output. And not pointing fingers and blaming a system Absolutely. not pointing fingers and blaming anybody in i this think it's case, easy it's easy to but do ourselves because yeah. we had to ask those hard questions yeah. and i tell you what like asking hard questions and reflecting on things i tell you what it'll you change grow, your perspective you can grow so much from it so you know it it's it's uncomfortable yeah but Absolutely. if you're willing to grow from it it can be a turning point for you and you know what's mm -hmm. kind of funny Devin, is that what's you that? just segued with your efficiency statements i know into um our topic getting better at this time. game mm -hmm. So now that we have that, um, what I really want you guys in the next week or two to really be thinking about and um, feel free in the comment section down below to tell me how that's going. And then in the next episode, feel free to tell me how it went for that week when you're thinking about the whole idea of justice and fairness. Do you stop at fairness and outcome? And if you do, let's try to reel it back a little bit and let's go through that four step process together. Let's think, are we starting at a fair basis? Chances are that's a yes, because a lot of people have exposure to do something. It may not be the exact same thing, but you have that opportunity. And then are you being efficient and putting in the effort required on your input? And if so, the just response, is that happening? Nine times out of 10, yes, you're getting the just rewards. And then you get the outcome you're looking for. So start looking at every task you do and every project you do in the context of that four step process. And let us know in the comment section down below how that's going for you. Um, and whether you thought this was some insightful information to grow as a person, grow as a family, grow as a couple, whatever it may be. And now in next week's episode, we'll be talking about working effectively. This next episode will be kind of my wife's forte because she has had a lot of experience in the last Bless week. His heart. And we will definitely be talking about that in next episode, but she has a lot of experience in the last week of, how she in needs to week, yeah. just work as a whole, <laughs> but not just work. Cause then we got, we talk about, you know, the effort you put into it, but working efficiently and effectively as well as having the correct amount of effort. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be our next week's topic. Once again, thank you guys so much for joining us yeah. in Modcasts episode mods, four. Mods cast. Mods cast. Oh yes, my God. Right mods cast episode four, justice and fairness. Once again, in the comment section down below, let me know how it goes. Also, feel free to let us know what you want us to talk about because we enjoy kind of having these brain conversations even as long and drawn out as they may get. But it's, it's a lot of fun. So remember, liking, comments, subscribe, great tools for you to get in touch with me. Let me know what you liked, didn't like, and what you want to see next. Without further ado.
further ado. Without further ado. Oh, can I just say something really quick? I'm yes. going to let him freeze. Like, <laughs> do it, do it, do it. I can't. You have to finish oh. because this has to I be the last gonna thing. I was just going to say, thank you so much for tuning in and just. Absolutely. Um, it's a blast. You know, we are by no means experts on these yes, things. Yes, we are. We, well, he thinks he is. I am. Um, but, you know, we just really appreciate your willingness to just kind of hear what goes on in our heads. Yeah. And, um, you know, Thinking we just together. want you to know that, you know, we're still learning about each other. It's all, and it's all about being real. It, I, being it real. And, you know, we don't know everything, but, you know, we just want to share. I know what, everything. Just I may be wrong share. about what I know, but I know everything. <laughs> So th- thank you, I'm thank you kidding. for allowing us to open our hearts up to you, oh, good. and just for your support. Mm-hmm. And uh, we we want you to know we love you guys. And without Absolutely. further ado, no, I'm gonna show up the filthy <laughs> little Keiko. Remember, love you guys, and we will see you next time. Toodles. Toodles. Toodles.